The 2014 BYU signing class is officially in the books, and the Cougars, Greg Rubel, have signed 20 players. It's kind of a smaller class than what BYU is used to. Uh, Bronco said, and he wanted to make sure we emphasize the word emphasize the word might, but he said this might be BYU's strongest ever. Maybe just some overall impressions of the 20 guys that the Cougars are bringing into Provo for next season. Well, first of all, I think his inclination is correct. I, I think he says that because he f feels it really is going to be uh, the best group. And, and of these 20, two are already in school, Shelton and Kurt, so 18 new signees. In fact, that, that number is maybe one or two higher than I thought it would be, which may indicate that, you know, in the last couple of weeks, you know, they've, they've done some shuffling to make sure that these guys can come in and, 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 and have the scholarship they need. Uh, but, but I think that what you've done with the 2014 class, if you're BYU, is you've dressed um, needs immediately. Uh, when, when Bronco talks about needing linebackers and wide receivers who can make immediate impact and play right now, he's got them. I mean, w when you bring in two JUCOs who are both seen as top 20 JUCO wide receivers, in fact, uh, uh, Blackman's seen as the number four JUCO wide receiver in the country, Kurt's number 13, and Kurt's was kind of thought of as the marquee guy. You bring in two top 20 JUCO wide receiver standouts, then a guy that's played three years of D1 ball, in addition to your group you've already got, you know, those are immediate impact needs. Where, where Trey Dye, who's an exciting player, maybe a, a guy you look at well down the line or a specialist right now. That's how deep they were at that particular position. And then to get the linebackers, Warner and Cook, is just you. Those are two really solid outside linebackers. And then to get late in the process, uh, Uriah Le uh, Leatawa, so late that he wasn't on uh, you know, he, he wasn't in the recruiting slides Bronco was showing. Uh, it was like minutes before he took the podium, uh, Uriah made his decision. I think you can look and see standouts up and down this class, offense and defense. And uh, I, th I think when Bronco says it was a great day, not a good day, he thinks this could be a special group. Well, and I, I think when you can identify your number one target as being wide receivers, and then you come away with Nick Kurtz, who you knew you already had, and Devin Blackman and Jordan Leslie, I, I think you have to feel extremely pleased with what your, re your recruiters, your coaches, and I know Bronco talked about that. He was very pleased with the effort that he got out of his coaching staff in getting these guys in. And, and, and the addition of Jeff Martzen to the staff, uh, you know, put, put a whole new set of, I think, marching orders in front of these guys. And, and Bronco said time and again, you know, how Jeff's inclusion in the process meant such a big difference to how things got done uh, this time around. And, uh, and you know, you, you, you can't look up and down this class and say they didn't get after the guys they really needed. Um, and, and, and just to be able to bring in, like you mentioned, uh, immediate impact guys at, at that spot addresses what I think was Bronco's key need. And that's, you know, what was lacking from this last year's team? It was, it was red zone and it was explosive plays. Uh, they got yards and, 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 they, and they ran a lot of plays, but the explosive plays were missing and red zone scores were missing. And the more weapons you can array down there inside the 20, the better. And, the, and he got them today. The interesting part about this, and you know, some people may hear, well, it's a class of only 20, and that is a, a smaller group than what we're used to, to seeing. But with BYU, you obviously have the, the mission aspect, and the Cougars are returning 18 guys coming off of mission. So you've got to put those guys into the mix and realize that a lot of these guys that are coming back from their missions will probably have an immediate impact as well. And, and Bronco said that next year's signing class may be smaller again for that reason, more return missionaries coming back. Dave Rose is seeing the same thing. With, with the mission age changing, you're in this transition period right now where um, the numbers may be a little, a, a little skewed year to year until this thing gets figure it out and you get into your into your pattern of most of the high school kids who are LDS going immediately on missions before they start to play because right now you're still getting a lot of these guys uh, among these return missionaries are a bunch of guys who already did play for BYU before leaving that'll be less the case as time goes on most of the RMs BYU gets in the future will be stepping on campus for the first time to play when they get back one of the things that really stood out to me and you know and there is this perception that BYU can't recruit against the big boys and Bronco brought up the fact that that BYU went head-to-head -head with USC for four guys. Now, they didn't get Damian Mama, the outstanding offensive guard, but they won three of the four recruiting battles against the Trojans. I think that speaks very highly of what the Cougars are doing when they go out and talk to these kids. And they got a flip from Stanford uh, in, in, in Uriah Leatawa, and, and that's not easily done. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're a good enough player and student to be in at Stanford, and then, uh, and then flip at the, you know, at the very end. You know, you, you've done a good job if you're BYU. And, and, and really, you, know, you, you could tell by, by kind of tracking Uriah's thoughts on, on Twitter um, just how much of an impact his trip to BYU made on him and how tough it was to all of a sudden think that I was set. Now I'm not all of a sudden, and why is that? And Bronco addressed that a little bit too in terms of what happens with a lot of these guys when they come to BYU, come on their visit, 
and realize just how unique a place it is and how unique a lot of their, uh, uh, of, of their fellow recruits are in terms of what they kind of want out of, their, out of their collegiate experience right now. And not everybody is, um, is maybe what you'd call a typical BYU recruit. It really spans the country. I mean, every time zone and from the south to the west coast, they're getting them from all over. And, and Broncos widened the net again. We talked about this on Cougar Sports Saturday on the weekend. And when Bronco came in, one of the early objectives was to kind of narrow that net and make sure they weren't wasting time with guys they had no shot at. And, and after you know, some years of narrowing and really making your pool very small, uh, I think they realized that an expansion was needed to make sure that they're, that they're not letting someone get away who really could be a good fit at BYU if they only looked a little wider in their horizon. I think we're seeing that too. Well, one of the things that's unique to BYU is even after these signing classes, because of missions and things like that, it may be a couple of years before we see these guys on the field, but there's no question that as of today, Bronco Mendenhall and his coaching staff are extremely pleased with the class of 2014.